thank you for joining sir my pleasure my pleasure so it's it's just uh, there are some students from uh, the previous batches and some from the ongoing batches mm -hmm. and uh, you know i think this I is part of your nano degree program right nano degree program okay yes yes okay Yes, yes, I'm here, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Aish. Okay, so Abhinavji, we are waiting for Anil sir also to join from Blue Bolt, or uh, no? Uh, okay. We can. We can. So, so we can proceed. Okay, so I just I will just take few minute, guys, because I think every student in this call apparently knows me very well. We have been in discussion. And as Avinash, Avinash has shared that there are students who have completed the nano degree program and there are students who are still working with the nano degree. So I thought it's a very good opportunity that everyone can be in this meeting so that they can connect and get some views from uh, Arindam sir regarding the ongoing EV trends and regarding the role of ASDC in this ongoing EV revolution within the whole country. And uh, I thank everyone who joined. And in this session, the main agenda is basically <laughs> that we share some information about what DIY Guru ASGC is doing and about the students who have completed the AS Nano Degree Program and will now be going for the ASGC certification process and everything which has been done for them so far. So, Vinasji, how uh, should be the deadline planned for this event? Uh, can you share uh, some views about the possible deadline on this? I think uh, let's start with Ame. Ame uh, will start with uh, introduction about how the whole placement procedure happens. And then uh, uh, Arindam sir will shed some light on uh, how we are planning, you know, this nano degree program to be much more uh you know impactful and then i will uh brief a bit about this nano degree program and then you will conclude i mean we can we will conclude by 1 pm okay perfect then uh Anessa, are you available in the call if so then maybe can... uh yes good afternoon yes. good afternoon uh, good afternoon arindam sir uh, good, good afternoon, up. everyone. Yes. So uh, at the foresight, let me just congratulate each and everyone who are here. And I'm sure we have interacted many times when we were going through this entire program of EV Nano Degree. And we all have completed, you know, some minor projects, major projects. We have worked on your CVs. We have interacted. We have taken your technical interviews. And I'm sure by the end of this program, there is definitely some, uh, you know, change in the thought process, uh, you know, which we were able to bring during this entire course of, you know, nine months of this EV Nano Degree program. And I'm sure this certification is not the end. Now you have already entered the industry. And what we expect is go out there and make some changes and do some revolutionary things and you know so that we can include that in the curriculum as well so ultimately what we want is whatever students are going through this entire ev nano degree program should contribute to this ev revolution which is going on in india and that is the aim you know what we have set out for this program so i congratulate everyone on behalf of diy guru and i would ask Ayush to take it forward. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So Ayush, uh, if there is any volunteer who can, uh, you know, who, who have actually passed nano degree and, and would like to uh, share his or her feedback. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm sure there would be many volunteers to speak. Uh, I believe guys from the from the participants who have completed nano degree, would you like to come up on stage and share something? Maybe Harshit, Harshit, are you available? Would, would you like to share some of your experience? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hello, sir. 
Harindam sir. Hi. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Harshit Thakra, student of EV degree <coughs> batch for 2021. I mean, I'm really thankful to DIY group for presenting me with such a nice opportunity to learn and explore the fast booming world of EVs. I mean, through their well-defined course, which starts from the very basic, like the fundamentals of automobile engineering to advanced topics like dynamics of vehicle. I have learned a lot. Also, their project-based learning approach comes quite handy. And also talking about the mentors, they have also the in-depth knowledge of their domain and are also very supportive. So I, uh, I mean, I just thank once again to the entire DIY group team for their support and mentorship. So, so Harshad, what are you doing right now during after your narrow degree program? What is your current employment status? Yeah, so sir, currently I am itself employed in the DIY group as a SOLIDWORKS trainer. I am a CAD, CAD trainer in the SOLIDWORKS itself. And apart from that, I am also in the TCS working full time. Okay. So Arindam, sir, this is something I also wanted to share with you. Yes, go ahead, Ayush. Sorry, I was muted. Yes, I, I just wanted to share this fact that all nine candidates who basically cleared this narrow degree from DIY Guru side were all placed in the relevant EV industries before even completing their nano degree. So this is something good achievement for us. Very good. And I just wanted to share. Congratulations. Yeah. Yes, sir. And um, I just wanted to share what DIY Guru is trying on its part to basically help these minds to be into the EV side. So basically the how DIY Guru works is that whenever we get any new technology, we automatically present this technology access to our students. And I think everyone who is available here in this meeting can, can basically support this fact. For, for instance, DIY Guru is now developing course on hydrogen fuel cells as well, because we understand that the next generation power, uh, what do you say, the next generation of powering our EV vehicles is also involved with the hydrogen fuel cell. So whenever any student enrolls in the narrow degree program, DIY Guru automatically provides him or her the access of any upcoming courses which are not yet being launched but still under the phase of development. With this, we really ensure that in case in the next six months, the EV technology has evolved and has enhanced much more, then DIY Guru can be a part of the trend and the student will automatically get the access. And this way, we really want a student to be updated with the industrial trends. And that, that is why DIY Guru has started the live sessions and live based training other than the 25 courses which we provide as a part of the nano degree. And right now, DIY Guru is conducting more than 15 to 20 hours of weekly live classes in which we cover the domain of EV electrical, EV mechanical, EV practical, EV R&D product launch and development, EV data analytics, and EV business. So we are really targeting all the domains of EV, not just focusing on the technical side, because we strongly believe EV is an interdisciplinary domain where we need to focus everywhere. So our students right now are also learning programming language and data analytics so that they can go into the industry or in any research domain and can say that I can even analyze the EV data sets, not just in technical, electrical, mechanical. So I think this is the main, what you say, the distinction we have is trying to create, taking EV as a product, not just as a technology. And, and uh, with this, I would now request you, sir, and then, sir, to please have some views on, on this. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Ayush. <clears throat> and thank you, Avinash, uh, for, um, you know, setting this up. Uh, absolutely delighted to be part of this you know uh, initiative at diy guru for uh, this uh, opportunity to interact with all of you gone through this program or are going through this particular program uh, which is uh, fairly uniquely designed uh, from a perspective of uh, learning about electric vehicles in this country now <laughs> Uh, why this is very critical and important at this point in time, especially for those of you who want to make a career in the automobile industry, is from a perspective that uh, there will be an existence of 
electric vehicles going forward to what percentage in which categories uh, there will be more penetration which geographies will have more penetration which specific energy storage device uh, will be uh, you know uh, more adopted uh, there are many unanswered questions today uh, of course uh, but then that is the excitement of being part of a technology that is growing you know uh, when we were in college uh, computing devices underwent a cycle like this it was much slower cycle uh, we started off with uh, mainframe computers to desktop computers uh, to laptops then handheld devices and today you know everything is seeming to kind of uh, converge into a mobile device uh, from a from a computing device perspective or or even um, from a perspective of wearables that is also uh, catching up to a some extent but but again i mean there is there is enough disruption that is happening there as well uh, the reason I was trying to give you that comparison is because it will probably be easier for you to kind of look back and see that if you were available in the early 90s or mid 80s when this whole uh, journey was kind of picking up speed, um, you know, and if you would take a snapshot today after 40 years uh, or, or close to almost 50 years, uh, maybe uh you will realize that there's been a stark change in uh, the technology that has happened the technology is today probably much more uh stable uh of course there are changes happening uh, things are becoming smaller and smaller but at the same time it's kind of uh, crystallized to a certain amount of form factor a certain amount of computing speeds etc there is, of course, uh, one talks about computing uh, in, in, in computing world, one talks about, uh, you know, quantum computing and stuff like that. But th that, again, is the next generation or a next uh, cycle of technology development, which has to, again, go through a similar cycle of, uh, you know, evolution or development that uh, one will need to uh, take care of. So fundamentally, you know, when we learn EV, we just get too bogged down about the EV and the battery and the motor and very specifics of it. Of course, you need to do that. But please have a wider perspective of uh, uh, being part of a new technology adoption process. And in case of uh, riding a life cycle development of a technology adoption process, you would need to realize that people who are likely to become successful will have one common trait which is their eagerness to learn and learn about anything new and some of these may work well uh, in the short term some of them may not work well in the short term so these these kind of uh, you know technologies do have a certain amount of shelf life uh, they they uh, some uh, you know, progress very fast, but then kind of fade away fast as well. Some take a much longer time horizon to kind of become a stable technology, but then probably they survive over a longer. So it's a it's a much flatter curve, let's say, uh, in terms of the technology life cycle. Now, being part of an ecosystem which is around electric powered mobility and that is what i would kind of want to call it you know while ev is a common terminology that we are talking about uh electricity powered mobility is what we are looking at and the source of that electricity could be uh, anything and everything so that really opens up the wide horizon of how electricity can be produced and how electricity can be produced on the run or on the go Today, whatever we are saying as electric vehicle is not really an electric vehicle because it's not really consuming electricity on the go. It's it's coming from a stored electricity uh, kind of a format. So you necessarily need to have a battery. 
but uh, i don't know how many of you have uh, seen electric trams or electric buses which run on overhead cables which which essentially i mean you all would have uh, seen the metro rails working or you know electric trains working which are also electric actually so they are also electric vehicles you know and they have a they have a you know kind of a life uh, electric electricity fed into the system uh, because uh, they remain connected uh, with with the overheads you know <laughs> so um, now, 2019, I was in a uh, in one of the cities in 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 Russia called Kazan, and uh, they have electric buses which have been running for quite some time, and none of them are battery electric buses. Uh, they are basically buses uh, which run with overhead electricity cables. Uh, so one side of the road is kind of defined for these buses, and uh, and they are very very effective. Uh, in terms of their operations so unfortunately a lot of uh, you know uh, our hype uh, around battery uh, is because of the convenience it gives because you're not restricted to a path and stuff like that but in public transportation system that will make a huge huge impact uh, probably i have no idea why India is not experimenting with that kind of an opportunity or an or, a, or an infrastructure, but it definitely seemed to me like a wonderful solution to be working with. So one is that whole piece of technology, which is essentially taking in an el live electricity supply and uh, running your uh, and converting it into a mechanical motion for the vehicle to move from one point to another point, and that's. The, that's the core of the technology that we're talking about. Of course, when we talk about a battery electric vehicle or a hybrid electric vehicle, uh, you know, it becomes much more complex because you're not feeding the electricity straight onto the machine. You're basically mm -hmm. storing it somewhere in some form or you're having a charging recharge charging cycle, you know. Uh, charge dissipation and uh, charge accumulation process and uh, you know how do you optimize the whole uh, design in terms of its uh, power its uh, um, its its uh, you know the kilometers that it can run and all of that area is all of the load that it can carry Many of these things will become very important. You know. So, to my mind, uh, you know, understanding the basic is just the starting point, uh, which you would have done at this uh, during this program, and it's very important for you to understand that because uh, these kind of vehicles would typically integrate a lot, lot of different engineering fields. You know, uh, <clears throat> so. While uh, people say that it is an electric vehicle, but it is not only electric, it's also electronic. In fact, a lot of people I hear, common people, uh, you know, where for them an EV is an electronic vehicle, not an electric vehicle, because they kind of relate to the electronics in the vehicle much more than the electric you know, part of it. So, uh, and at the same time, it's a lot of software, it's a lot of uh, mechanical pieces, you know, uh, you would have heard, you know, news about uh, one of the two wheelers, which became very popular very quickly. And uh, it had a very mechanical failure that it was having because of the frame, you know, uh, the strength of the frame, you know. So while it's an electric vehicle, you can't, uh, you know, forego the mechanical design part of the vehicle because ultimately you're converting that electric piece, electric energy into a mechanical energy and the vehicle has to sustain that me mechanical energy. You know, and therefore it's uh, shock absorbers, it's weight distributions, it's, uh, it's, it's strength of the frame, uh, body, uh, you know, stresses bit getting generated, uh, you know, uh, 
so so all those mechanical stuff also be, uh, continues to remain important you know while we may have done away with the mechanical piece of the engine per se the ic engine per se but uh, but the vehicle still remains a fairly strong mechanical device you know which is supported by electric uh, uh, energy and a uh, lot of electronic control and uh, software controls essentially so uh, and and these i'm pretty sure will have a lot of development as we go forward i do see uh, a lot of you probably should be able to play a very significant part of this journey within our country uh, i'm sh i'm not sure if many of you are aware of this the government of india has a very ambitious program under the ministry of heavy industry called production linked incentive which is essentially uh, an allocation of 1.5 lakh crore fund that is available to be spent over a period of 5 years you know uh, for incentivizing industry to uh, grow their uh, production in certain specific technology areas and uh, out of that 1.5 lakh crore uh, a very significant part of it is actually mostly linked to electric vehicles the auto and the auto component uh, allocation in this is about 57000 crore and out of these 57000 crore i would say almost about 80% of the allocation is towards the development of parts uh, relevant for uh, electric vehicles uh, you know this is in addition to a separate 18000 crore that is allocated to advanced chemistry cell which is towards the development of uh, battery cells in india you know and and the technology for it so there is a significant amount of money that the government is actually putting behind the r and d for these areas which india thinks is very critical for its growth in the manufacturing sector and there given this kind of an initiative i believe some 100 plus companies in the automotive sector have already been approved for their plans for production linked incentive uh, scheme the pli scheme and uh, many of these companies i am sure will make significant investments in their development process because the way it works is that the company has to make its own private investment generate that additional capacity get that business produce that revenue and once they produce that revenue the government offsets the uh, expenses by that amount as an in financial incentive for the production that they have done so it's 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 outcome driven uh, it's 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 delivery driven uh, as kind of a scheme so it's not that you will just get the money up front to do something uh, you will have to do everything yourself and when you produce the result the government will uh, uh, you know give you the incentive Uh, you know okay. so there are a lot of options for entrepreneurs to explore yes 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 so entrepreneurs in the sense that you know uh, typically these have been allocated to fairly large uh, groups and uh, organizations but when they do their work you know automotive uh, the whole is very very interlinked you know at the at the end at a very level tired kind of an industry mm. uh, so there will be people who will be doing even the smallest of the parts etc so i mean i was in bangalore i mean when we met with you in bangalore for instance last week uh, i was coming from uh, this uh, battery pack assembly uh, supplier you know uh, who is working with multiple oems you know i think they are already working with about 9 or 10 different oems Uh, on two wheelers and three wheelers where they are essentially doing the battery pack uh, the, the entire battery management system so they get the cells and uh, then they do the assembly they put the mechanical frame of the battery pack etc etc and then they put the electronics on top of it and then do the programming so they were saying that all their battery pack systems actually comes with a gps and an iot device so which means that every battery pack that they supply to the oem is actually tracked by them internally about which cells are uh, working fine what is the charge level 
uh, they uh, they also uh, I, I think they they also send out alerts to the users in terms of uh, the charge you know the battery charge going down and stuff like and and it's a very small kind of a entrepreneurial startup company which was about i think till about 6 months back they were only about 15 or 20 people uh, today they are already about 200 people and they expect to grow to about 1000 plus people by next year <clears throat> You know, so I mean, many of these opportunities are coming in, you know, and, and then they want to get into the battery cell manufacturing itself, which they say is about uh, anywhere between nine to 12 months away from now. Um, but, uh, but yes, I mean, uh, many such organizations are working and it's an opportunity for uh, many youngsters to also contribute and be part of this entire ecosystem as you go forward. Sir, you said uh, short, short curve and you know flat curve. I mean, there are many students who have this doubt in their mind that okay, by 2030 or by 2025, EV trend will grow. But what after that? So, are we looking on a short curve or is it something that will? Uh... So, I I think you know if you tell me that it's a battery electric vehicle driven by lithium ion batteries only it's probably more towards being a short curve but if you expand that definition and you say uh you know broadly electric powered vehicles uh it's a it's a very flat curve it will take because we've just started with the development we've not even started with the curve actually because <clears throat> this was the lowest hanging fruit that we adopted uh, because we've had a success with lithium ion batteries in the computing devices or the mobile devices. Uh, the automotive figured out that this could be one, one solution which ticks all the boxes at this point in time and it, though it has some challenges, but this is what will make it work for some time till we hit upon another technology which is significantly superior to this technology and more scalable, more affordable. I mean, uh, lithium is what? Lithium is a rare earth metal. How, how has somebody got the name rare earth? English rare means something which is not found in abundance. So if it is a rare earth metal driven uh, cycle, there is only as much lithium as we have in this earth. There is of course talk about sodium ion and multiple things that people are working on. But we don't know, I mean, what their futures are going to be like. But, but the battery itself may not be the eventual solution that I, what I was saying. You know. So if you look at a lot of public mobility, public transportation or public mobility, um, how many cities had uh, uh, metro connectivity about maybe 15 years back in India? Mm, Delhi was there. Right? Oh, uh, 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 probably two cities, Delhi and Calcutta. Calcutta. Today, I think almost about 30 cities in India have metro connectivity. Mm. Okay. And in each city, the the penetration is increasing in and the number of cities are also increasing we are also talking about uh, you know rapid rail transit systems uh, like delhi merit and so on and so forth we're talking about bullet trains and all that so mobility in a in a large way that impact is going to happen i mean if that happens and india has typically been a more uh, rail prone uh, you know people find Rails easier, much easier to connect than to cars, essentially. Of course, of late, people have gotten used to driving cars. Highways have become better and stuff. So, on. so I think both will exist, uh, both will grow. But at the same time, you will need to see how electric vehicle technology is working. And the moment you say electric vehicle, a lot of people get constrained by the two wheeler, four wheeler kind of a thing. I say that there is so many applications. You know, you have a golf cart, which is also an electric vehicle. You have, you know, I think the airports, uh, the Delhi airport recently did a, a electric powered autonomous pushback vehicle. 
uh, which uh, is now believed to be a very significant contributor that can emerge for future in terms of uh, in terms of uh, saving air, airline turbine fuel because these can be used to uh, take them right till the runway essentially and without powering on the aircraft essentially uh, similarly tractors you know agricultural usage etc where you could have autonomous electric powered vehicle so autonomous electric these are connected vehicle i mean these are all interlinked you know so it's not really that uh, they are substantially working in isolation to each other they're all kind of interconnected so I think this whole vast ecosystem itself is undergoing a tremendous amount of change in terms of how automobiles are going to be used and uh, what are some of the application cases, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At the same time, I would request this audience not to leave track of what is happening on drones as well, because earlier you know on road we had vehicles and on air we had aircrafts which were at least if nothing else 15000 feet above the ground you know. but today the drones could be about 100 feet above the ground essentially you know so i mean whether you call it a automobile or an aircraft i don't know i mean it is not neither actually but uh, they are talking about drone taxis and you know drone deliveries some experiments is already happening so we never know what is it going yeah tomorrow i might even feature a vehicle which could be uh, partially it could be an it could be partially driven on road and partially it could transform itself to a drone right <laughs> okay so i don't know <laughs> maybe so we may not need bridges because you can drive till the end of the uh, river then become a drone, fly over the river, and then kind of back back again on the road. And I don't so, sir, uh, <clears throat> there are some of students who are from uh, Kia Motors, Hyundai, and Tata as well. So, what future trends uh, do you see for them? Uh, you know, they are all working professionals. <clears throat> okay, and in manufacturing or engineering functions. From different domain, yeah. Okay. okay. So now I think, see, in the industry, again, you will have different functions and in different functions, there will be different challenges. Uh, I think having more R&D in Indian context is becoming even more apparent. I think almost every big manufacturer is wanting to bring in vehicles which are more... Uh, so-called designed for an Indian user kind of a thing, etc. Uh, so therefore, there are a lot of innovations that are happening there. Uh, similarly, if you talk about manufacturing, uh, at OEM level, manufacturing has moved significantly to uh, automated process. I was in Kia factory a couple of weeks back. I think the level of automation that's there in Kia is significantly higher than you could see imagine probably in any other automobile factory within india itself also but uh, but then that's that's the way the factories of the future are going to be uh, looking like you know um it's also one of the newest plants in india so to say uh, there are challenges on supply chain side, you know, how do you understand what kind of technologies, what are materials? Materials is becoming very complex, uh, complex in the sense you have so many options, you know. So I was uh, the other day, uh, you know, maybe a few months back, I was meeting a, a, one tire, uh, one vendor. You know, you, you had these commercial vehicles who had uh, leaf springs. You know, you had these five or six strips of metal, which will form your leaf spring, which will do the cushioning of the load and all that. So instead of that, they have moved that into uh, one single piece of composite. And it gives a much higher strength uh, and much lighter weight than those 
uh, leaf spring designs, the traditional leaf spring design. So in tomorrow, uh, maybe, maybe I don't know, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, uh, somebody coming into automobile industry may not even understand what a leaf spring is, metallic leaf spring is, because it might cease to exist. So many of those things are happening. A uh, lot of, uh, you know, controls in the car, automations within the car, uh, you know, the entire uh, management system within the car itself, you know, whether you are talking about right from your infotainment to climate control systems, to uh, brake systems, to transmission systems, everywhere there is tremendous amount of, uh, you know, changes in terms of different materials, different uh, control systems that are getting effect, impacted. And, and all these will have a tremendous opportunity for people uh, to experiment, uh, innovate, and come out with solutions which could uh, provide uh, that opportunity for the larger OEMs like the Kia Hyundai's of the world to start adopting such uh, technologies, essentially. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I... So, yeah, in between, while Arindam sir was sharing his uh, experience and knowledge, I think many of our new students, because it's always very confusing for a student to really decide how he or she should define the learning path while going into the electric vehicle market and domain. And when we talk such experience from you all, then it is really enhancing even for me because I'm not exactly in the EV side, I'm more into the experimental physics domain. So for all of us, this is quite uh, important and essential to really understand how the industries are working. I always feel like as academics, we should never focus just on the education, but also on the last mile connectivity that is the industries and research domains. But this is something very important and I think we should have it more often and invite more experts like you so that our students can get more and more enlightenment and understanding. While you were uh, discussing, sir, I was talking to my students that if any of them would like to share their views on this ongoing EV upskilling. So guys, here's your time. Do you want to share your views? Just feel free. I'll be happy to know yes, your sure, feedback. Sure. And how. Yes, please, Abhishek. Uh, sir, this time uh, I am with this uh, group and I am from Mahindra and Mahindra. So uh, I am working here as a trainer since last 40 years. I am with the automotive industry. So I started my career as a, a ground level technician. From technician to corporate trainer, it was a bit tough, terrific journey for me. And uh, while in the last year I was uh, trying to connect with some worldwide uh, manufacturers to get through the interviews and all. So a few barriers that I got that, that I do not have the uh, electrical vehicle certification or I, or I never ever worked before with the electrical vehicle. So that was the main barrier for me to connect with them. Otherwise, everything, all the mechanical and the uh, troubleshooting factors, <coughs> uh, of the challenges that I have come across, there was no problem. Only thing was EV certification. So I essentially spoke to the DOI guru and uh, uh, they have given me a right direction and the right path. And uh, over this forum, I can say that I was really very fortunate to join such as a course. And it is also a AICT approved course. It is also a ASDC approved course. So I have been uh, in this course since last uh, one week. I am just new joining. But I can say that the, uh, the way they have uh, even, you know, explained the things, they have uh, curriculum, the all presentations. It's really, really, very much essential for the upcoming years and for the new joiners those who are actually uh, thinking right now to join so i will uh, i will just give a suggestion to them it's a very wonderful course maybe you cannot understand it right now but for the later on you will definitely understand that what uh, what big thing that you have done in your life and what kind of upskilling that you have uh, brought through so that's all about my feeling and my observation uh, let me complete it. After that, I will give more suggestion on this or more uh, feedback on this. That's all are good. It's a very much supervision. Ayush Sharma and uh, uh, Vinash Shubham, everyone has given a very good support. They're, uh, you know, I mean, talking with the one by one uh, students. It's really, really big matter. Nowadays, education is a 
business, but here uh, the potential uh, Ayushan is showing us it is really, really very challenging, and I really must appreciate his uh, thoughts that he has given a lot of opportunity to uh, to our industry. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, I wasn't expecting this from me, but yeah, thank you very much. Guys, anybody else would like to share yeah. something? Or I think uh, Nitin uh, Nitin Devangan has a question to Mr. Arindam sir. So Thank yeah, you. good afternoon everyone. And uh, first of all, uh, uh, my pleasure to hear Arindam sir. Uh, I think I heard you uh, in multiple locations, but uh, seeing you, it's my pleasure. Uh, couple of things uh, about uh, me and also with this organization I am engaged with. So I am Nathan Narangan and I work with John Deere as a tech lead in Compressional Fluid Dynamics uh, Division for last 13 years. And uh, um, I got to know about this course, uh, I think five, six months back and I was following up with uh, guys here and there. And uh, with a lot of approvals, I think uh, overall the team was very uh, helpful, uh, starting with Vinita and then other guys. And finally, I got into with a lot of approvals from my organizations. Uh, uh, really, the overall my learning experience in last two months is uh, huge. And um, I think the first day I met Avinash and I said, um, really, I don't know anything. How much you can teach, I don't know. Even if I learn 5%, it's good for me but i guess i moved beyond five percent and uh, at least understood a lot about electric i was a pure or core mechanical and thermal engineer passed out from iit then uh, studying and then uh, no, uh, doing a lot of uh, analysis work only uh, so overall i am on the on the course front uh, i guess um, the, the python all electric uh, classes online classes are really going well and I really appreciate efforts that has been uh, made to build this course. It's a huge effort uh, done by this team. Uh, I have one question. When uh, sir, you're talking about the future of the electric and you talk about the how the automobiles can drive, uh, being a construction equipment an analyst or maybe working with John Deere, you know, mm. we build usually tractors and then also construction machines like backhoe loaders. My question was that, uh, how do you think about the electrification in construction equipments? Like, you know, someone like a JCB, Caterpillar, Volvo are designing backhoes as characters. <laughs> like, they see that can be converted into electric. And then also what are the challenges that uh, is faced in front of that, that they cannot launch to Indian market. Yeah, so no, I think good observation, Nitin. Very happy to hear that you're finding this course useful. Um, and uh, see, if you look at uh, the infrastructure equipment, you know, which includes the construction equipments, there are specialized equipments for building roads, ports, etc. So let me broadly classify this as infrastructure equipment kind of a segment. Uh, I think there will be significant opportunities for uh, some of these vehicles to go electric as well as uh, to go autonomous. Uh, there are certain areas that we'll need to uh, still have do a lot of work. I think uh, certain instances, especially like when you were talking about JCB, I mean, in terms of excavators, etc., you, you will need a certain amount of power, etc., that will uh, be required to be pushed. And whether uh, to produce that power, is it better to do it with electrical energy or you want to convert it through the traditional IC engine side, you know, diesel engines or whatever. Uh, those are things that we'll have to look at. Uh, logistic sector in terms of uh, material handling equipments, a lot of it has already gone into electric uh, application. So you have electric uh, forklifts. So both electric and uh, autonomous uh, 
and and connected uh, i think these are kind of getting connected to each other also and uh, that is also something uh, which is uh, happening quite a lot uh, so a lot of these warehouse management uh, equipment etc material handling is becoming fairly automated using electric power and uh, also being connected so that they can be remotely monitored controlled programmed etc etc even in construction equipment i think these some of these will start making a lot of sense but i think there, there was one application video that i was looking at somebody has created some something around this this road laying process you know which is uh, rather than connecting a genset to it and then powering it etc they have kind of uh, used a, a kind of a battery pack vehicle uh, which is connecting it and so they get it charged and then they use that so it's kind of cleaner in that sense uh, but again at the end of the day uh, a lot of electric power that is getting generated whether that itself is much cleaner or not is something that we'll have to work and i think india is doing a tremendous work in terms of the solar energy side of it so integration of that solar application with uh, electricity uh, powered uh, equipments or vehicles etc is something that is that has a huge future so some of you may want to tread that path in terms of understanding more on the solar side and integrating it to the electricity requirement of it so as i said you know whether you need a battery or not will depend on where the power is getting generated whether it needs to be stored etc so yes a uh, lot of different opportunities but i definitely see a huge opportunity even in the construction equipment or infrastructure equipment side i hope thank you sir that is yeah. part of your part. yeah yeah I appreciate. It. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, guys, I'm sure Arundam sir could also be would be busy for his other tasks. So we have few minutes left. If anybody else wants to ask any other question <coughs> or would like to share anything, just feel free. Otherwise, we move forward. Good afternoon, sir. Vijay Yadav here. Yeah? Yes, Vijay. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Actually, I wanted to share some of my view. And, uh, basically, previously I was almost ten years in motor, in five years in off highway uh, engineering for generator. Okay, when I saw this course, and now I I have been doing this course in the last two months. Okay, so so uh, in this course, what I what I feel is that uh, all the basics are very properly covered, and then after completing our offices, we can go home and we can. with the videos we can understand things and this is a very much uh, a very a good thing for a working employee basically who want to understand things and who want to learn and who want to get into this ev sector so i congratulate everyone involved in this to bring such a type of course and uh, special thanks to everyone like uh, avnav sir uh, ayush sir so vimal oja sir when i attend this offline course on sundays And then uh, I watched the videos of Pradeep sir, uh, where I get the, all the detailed information about the motors, electromagnets, and this is helping a lot in understanding the basic theory uh, of this EV vehicle. Yeah. So thanks. Just I wanted to convey my thanks for bringing out such a beautiful course. So last year I had uh, completed this uh, uh, automotive courses. If I had got to know about this course earlier, like in the last year itself, I I I think that I would have completed this course till now. Thank you, thank you, Vijay. And uh, thanks, thanks to everyone involved for being here. Uh, yes. Course. So, Arindam sir, Vijay is referring to the offline classes because the Avya Guru is also conducting <coughs> offline trainings to those who would like to study at the center. And then right. we have live trainings over the Zoom and the Webex platform who are yeah. not able to attend because of employment. Yeah. And then we have the set of online courses. So we are trying yeah. to cover all. And and do guys from all of your side, <coughs> we would also like to thank ASGC because in the end. we all got the confidence that the diy guru nano degree program is good enough because it is supported and validated by astc this is one of the main foundation pillar of diy guru as an organization 
and without such support from ASDC, it is always difficult for us to keep on continuing working in this domain. So thank you everyone for your doubts and queries and suggestions and views. So for those who have clarified the DIY Guru examination, you shall now receive a provisional certificate from DIY Guru stating that you have completed from our side. And then the team from AFGC will contact you for the upcoming processes. I believe AFGC would also like to have an assessment from their side to judge your expertise and see how well you have been doing in this EV sector. And then you will receive a final degree from ASGC very soon after all those process ends. But now you shall be receiving the provisional certificate from DIY Guru and ASGC stating that you have completed the nano degree program. Avinasa, you want to add anything on this or no, no, it's a, good enough? Yeah. This is okay. Good. Okay, then, then thank you, Arindam sir, again for joining and thank you everyone thank for joining. You. And thank you. Yes. Thank you guys for your time. We'll soon connect uh, with each other and let's hope to get as better as possible in this EV along with the India. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone for your time and participation. All the best to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Arindam sir. Thank you, thank you Avinash ji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.